All right, we're in High V in Sycamore, Illinois today. I'm with Lisa Brandt, my favorite registered dietitian. Thank you. Ray. We're you're welcome. <laughs> and we're in the the bulk food area, and we're in here for a reason. And one of the things that we wanted to highlight or point out, and Lisa, we talked before the camera was rolling about where the walnuts go. So all right, so walnuts. What's great about those? So walnuts of all the nuts are highest in omega three fats. And omega-3 fats are good for your heart, they help with anti-inflammatory, good for the brain. Your brain loves fats. It's great brain food for the brain. So everybody that's asked, well, all right, you're telling me to eat walnuts, where do I get them? Go to your grocery store. If you have a local high view, we recommend going there, but you can find them in the bulk area. Now, what would people use those for? What do you tell so, people well, to use them I for? Well, what I use them for is just a handful makes a great snack, but what you can also do is put them on your oatmeal. You can add them to salads. I do that a lot. I crush them up and I make a topping to use like on salmon. Uh, which also is high in omega-3. So you've got a lot of uses for them. You can, put them in, you can put them in your yogurt. You can put them on almost anything. So I'm hearing heart health, heart health, heart health, especially if you do like a walnut-crusted salmon, right, right. you're going to get the healthy fat from the nuts and also the salmon. The other thing is, for those that are watching what they're eating, uh, maybe, and I hope you're not, but if you are on a diet and you're looking for that crunch, especially with salad, Sounds like adding that to the salad is going to bring the crunch as well as all the benefits of the walnut. Right, and you know what? All these new studies are showing us that these fats, you know, fat was always the, the demon, the, the bad thing, but now we know that fats are good for us, especially these polyunsaturated and, and monounsaturated fats, and walnuts are full of these good fats. So that's a, a, tons of benefits, and Tim, you and I were talking off camera. There's also a lot of research, or recent research looking at, and this is been looked at in the past and it's always been glossed over, but the role fats play in the production of hormones, namely if you're male, as an example, testosterone. So if you're not eating enough fat, you are going to impair your body's ability to make hormones, including hormones like testosterone. Well, and it's also important to remember that um, for people who might be trying to lose weight, cutting fat out really isn't the answer. We do want these healthy fats. There's a lot of studies that are showing us that people eat enough fat, they do have success with weight loss. And that's kind of what we've seen as well is if you, and I'm a good example of that. Back in the 90s, everybody was fat free, right, right. as was I. And I was always hungry and I was miserable. Eating fat, you end up staying fuller longer. And another thing, like Lisa, you'd pointed out, not only are you getting the fat and only the small like handful of the walnuts, but you're also going to get fiber, and that fiber is going to it's going to play a role in keeping you regular. It's going to contribute to a healthy cholesterol profile. Keeps you full longer. It's going to keep you full longer. All benefits if you're trying to be and, healthy. And you know nuts are a pretty good source of protein as well. And so there's by a, eating and a there's handful that. of nuts, you're getting some good protein. You're getting some great fats, and you're going to feel full longer. So you're not going to be snacking right away in just you know a half hour it, or so. It's going to keep you full longer. It's going to stay with you. Right. So, right. Longer and, to digest. And I guess that would be another thing that if you add that to like your yogurt you're going to up the protein content right. of that meal and then we could probably make the case that combining amino acids from various sources may increase the absorption or assimilation of all of the amino acids in comparison if you ate them individually. Um, what about some of the other ones? So like there's some other ones are like nuts are a great one too. We have sunflower seeds, we have um, pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds. So all the nuts and seeds are, are great sources and, of good fats for and us. And again, adding like the sunflower seeds, that, that would be another one added to a salad. It's going to bring the crunch factor. You could add it to trail mixes. You could do a trail mix with different nuts and you could throw some seeds in. So and that would be a great thing as well. Trail mix, one of the things I like about trail mix, and Tim, we can probably highlight some of the dehydrated fruits. Like there's the apple rings. If you get one that isn't, it's just a dehydrated fruit without the sugar. Now this isn't going to fit everybody all the time, but if you want a weatherproof, extreme hot or cold snack that can sit in the armrest of the car or in your cup holder, that homemade trail mix right. is going to fit the bill. So right in this aisle in the bulk area, you can grab the, some dehydrated fruit, you can grab a variety of the nuts and the seeds, and you're going to make a snack that's crunchy, has some protein, healthy fats. And then again, so those, like parents, if you do travel sports and tournaments on weekends, you can throw that in the minivan, you can throw it in the SUV, and the weather's not going to cause it to spoil. The other thing is, when you go to those weekend tournaments, every community has a grocery store. And almost all grocery stores have a bulk aisle. So you don't have to go to the drive-up window. 
You can go to the grocery store. You can make your kids and yourself a snack right at the local grocery store. And I was going to say with the uh, dried fruits, it doesn't take a lot of it to get that great taste. You can throw a few pieces in or cut up a few pieces, and it'll it'll you know extend it into your trail mix. So you don't need tons of the, the dried fruit per se and, if you're worried about sugar or anything like that. And that's like, like Tim, let's come down. Let's go buy the dates. So Tim's our camera guy. He runs our training department at our club. Um, so dates and figs, you know, Tim eats a lot, another one of our employees do. They have specific health reasons they do, but Lisa, why would you, or what would be the benefit for the average person consuming dates? Well, dates are great to use in baked goods. Um, you could, they can add a lot of moisture to a product. They can add some really nice sweetness, but they're also really high in, they're a good source of fiber. And what I like about dates is I'll cut them up really small and add them to pretty much any... Well, for example, I'll use it in oatmeal a lot. I, I like oatmeal. So I, I load mine up with things like dates and walnuts, maybe some cinnamon, um, things like, uh, you know, a dollop of yogurt, like some plain Greek yogurt, and kind of mix that all together. So it's an, another thing you can add. And a lot of people, like I would never go to the store and buy dates, and I would never go to the store and buy figs. But because I have people on my team at my club that have some food issues, we'll say, they've got some autoimmune or, or maybe arthritis is arthritis eye that they, there's a concern with some foods that they have so they're limited on what they eat as a result I've tried some of these things don't be afraid to go out of the box and try some different stuff another thing that's in the aisle is the ginger now the ginger here is actually ginger and there, there is sugar there's no sulfur apparently you can get it with sulfur I'm not sure why but it says no sulfur um, ginger is also anti-inflammatory and ginger is a, a nice add-on not in this form, but you can use ginger to make teas, you can cook with it, um, and again, it's something in North American culture we offer just look right, often look right past. And you can use, you can get ginger root out of the produce section and you can shave that off and throw it into some, steep it in some hot water, and then you got a nice, you can make a tea with it like you just said. Another thing about the dates that you might not be aware of is you can steep those in some hot water and it kind of brings back a little more of the softness. They can be tough sometimes. So you can um, let those steep for a while and then slice them up real nice and then and throw them into pretty much anything. So you'd you add, add them to the food muffins. then? You could throw them in pancakes if you wanted. So it almost be like a, a, after you soak them do yeah, that they're a little after softer you steep them then, easier to work with so then would it be like a blueberry consistency after you've done uh, that no not softer? quite that okay not, not all right as soft as a blueberry. but it, it's you know it, you can always add some water to them just to kind of soften them up so they're a little more easier to work with what about the goji berries those are in and out of the press periodically or at least have been the last couple yeah, years yeah they're considered a superfood they're 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 very pricey they're they're hard to get fresh so you'll just pretty much just see them dry or you'll see them in a form of a juice in it, in their superfood, is it antioxidative it properties? It has lots of antioxidants, polyphenols, or the quark that kind score, of or whatever. Right. Okay, so another antioxidant. You're mangoes gonna find it in the bulk one. food area. Like mangoes. And that's another food. You know, for the most part, if you're native to, um, at least the United States, we don't tend to favor mango. But if you go to Central America, um, probably South South America, even down to Mexico, it is more commonly consumed. What would be the benefit of that? Well, mangoes are really high in vitamin C, and again, antioxidants and things like that. Okay. I like to use frozen mango. I'm not too crazy about always about the cutting up ones. a mango. Not necessarily that it's fresh, it's a little tricky to cut up. So I'll use um, the frozen mangoes, and then I'll cut them up in, they're kind of chunked, so I'll cut them up in little smaller pieces, and I make a black bean salad with mangoes in it that's really that's good. Right. And you use the fro do you let the frozen I, ones thaw? No, I just kind of toss them in, and then I sit it in the refrigerator, and it'll thaw in It'll there. thaw enough to mm -hmm. consume, okay. Yeah. But, that, but I'll do that with some quinoa and some black beans and some mango, a little cilantro, some red peppers. A really interesting combination, but it tastes really good. You can make a whole meal out of it. Maybe we can make that sometime yeah, that'd here. Be that'd be good. Can we go around the, how many minutes have we been, Tim? Nine. Nine? We can go around the other side and show some of the whole grains and stuff. So you get to follow us, Tim. Do you edit this? No, it's live right oh, now on Facebook. Live. Very awesome. And we tagged you on it, so all your friends are able to watch this right now. You're getting like wrapped up in the cord. All right, so we're now we're on the the grain side of the the counter, if you will. Um, and there's a little bit of everything out here, from yeah. rice to beans, beans to quinoa. To quinoa is real popular right now. Grain. So what would you do with amaran? Um, you can cook it up just like you would any of the grains, like a rice or a quinoa, and you can use it as a side dish, or you could throw it into soups. I like doing that. And, and what benefits do we get from um, it? 
fiber just like you would in any, any of the other grains. It's okay. It's considered a whole grain, so it's a really good choice. And if you want to try something different, if you're a little adventurous and you're willing to try something new, they don't. Most of the grains don't have a, a really strong flavor. A little bit nutty sometimes, but they kind of take on the flavors of the things that you of put whatever you put it. Yep. So it's not going to overpower that. No, no, it won't at all. The beans is one thing. Like I made chili last week. We posted it on. I think it's on Snapchat, it's on Instagram, it's probably right here on my Facebook page as well. Um, if you're watching macros, God bless you, but if you are watching macros or you're counting calories or you have a reason to be more aware of the amount of carbs you're consuming and total calories, there's a lot of dishes we make or would traditionally be made and would include beans. There's nothing wrong with making the beans on the side and then portion, portioning them into the meal on your plate. So like we made chili last week and we actually used the white bean and I don't even know which one it was. It was simply because that's what I had. Um, but I made the chili, prepared the beans separate and then I combined some of the beans with each of the meals on our plates and it worked out totally fine. It allowed you to control portions. I did that only because my kids won't always eat them. So rather than make the chili and have them say, no way there's beans in it, we added some on the side and we left it at that. But you know, you I do that at my it. house too because there's people at my house who aren't as crazy about beans. So I will portion those in separately um, on the side. But you know what? A great thing with beans, and people are a little intimidated by them sometimes because they usually have to soak them overnight. But you know, some of the canned varieties have like no sodium in it or very little, like 15 milligrams. What? So real easy to to use beans. And, and soaking them overnight is not bad. You can get your crock pot out and just cover them with water or a pan on the stove and just leave them covered with just water let them all night. Sit. You don't have to, you know, yeah, don't turn the burner on or anything. Just let them soak overnight. They're a really inexpensive source of protein. And, so and really fiber. And, and they're fiber high in fiber. They're calorically fiber. dense. Yep. Um, they're going to keep you full longer. I, um, my mother-in-law to this day sprinkles red kidney beans on her salad. Whenever she has a salad, well, that she's got her own little thing of red beans, beans ready to go. So really versatile. And you can use it in a lot. You can mash them. You can make your own version of refried beans with Okay. Them. Yeah. So, again, That's real versatile idea. food. There's a lot of Very stuff you versatile. can do. And, and a lot of times, like, we would walk past this or we wouldn't buy beans or we'd only buy and use the beans that maybe our mom right. used or our grandma used. Right. But there's a lot of variety out there. Don't be afraid to try something new. And then, again, like, with the soaking the beans a day early, planning and being prepared is mission critical if you want to be happy, healthy, well, and lose pounds and inches. If you don't plan in advance, you don't prepare, you're going to end up hitting the drive-up window or doing what I do, which is swinging through hy buying a rotisserie chicken or two, and that ends up being dinner. But that's um, a good dinner. It is a good dinner, <laughs> but sometimes you know, there's already dinner in the freezer. It's just still frozen. If you are going to be doing something with your beans and you're going to soak them overnight, you can make a couple really quick easy meals with them. You could do like a red beans and rice if you like. You can throw them into a soup. I do this um, Tuscan soup that is just, it's got kale, it's got cannellini beans, it's got cherry tomatoes. Real quick and easy to make, under, less than 30 minutes and you got a great soup with some good protein in it. So you could, you know, if you're going to soak some, soak a big batch and make a couple different dishes with and it. And that's, and a lot of times that's what we do and if you've seen some of our, our food videos,